Nova is talking. <laughs> He seems very he's, agitated. He has a, yeah, and I like does. it. He's, he's probably uh, raising some of the points we uh, talked about as well. 15 to 1 in terms of kills at the end there. Three structures to zero. SPT got nothing. Yeah. I'm also really happy for 365, the support player of CE, right? Because after struggling a little bit on that Karazim earlier, uh, I think he had an amazing deck recane. Those stay a while and listens were absolutely on point every single time. And we go for KTY with four kills, zero deaths and 11 assists. It, that's actually still very impressive. And I don't want to take anything away from KTY, but I it was definitely also the pick they just made so much sense. It was so strong against the low damage threat of SPT, but still, he put up quite the show. That he did. All he has to do is do it one more time as we're heading to a game number five. And the winner of this will go on to play against the one for that first seed position. It's a C map choice, and they're taking us to the Infernal Shrines. No sneaky Praxis play. That was mm -hmm. the other option, or Dragon Shy, which they know SBT are kind of good at. So they're just sticking with Standard and bringing us to Infernal. Speaking of map setter, it actually surprised me so much that SBT, instead of picking Dragonshire, when they had the chance to, they chose Sky Temple. That's fair. I mean, it definitely worked, so not a huge amount of complaint there, but... Except still. for the last five and minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's yeah. <laughs> Semantics. Uh, but yeah, you bring up an excellent point there. As once again, we're seeing Aloofal getting targeted a little, and they kind of have to ban out Genji, even though it would be great for Aloofal. I mean, I guess they could commit that hopefully SPT wouldn't pick it, but it's such a risk. Yeah, not worth it. Banning out mm -hmm. the Genji. First pick going over to SBT. Now, the question is, I was going to say, do they have uh, a new rel for their own roster this time? Because she looked so oppressive in that last game. But it looks like they're valuing the Hanzo over that. Great shrine clear. Solid Choking poking a from again. a distance. And Lucky's damn good on that hero. They're choking a Lufal again. It's the same strat every single time. Sonya, a Zhu wow. classic coming in here. But in this case, it's probably going to be given over to KTY as those two basically swapped roles here. But an intriguing choice. It's great on this map, but it's been out of favor for a long time. And as first pick, what are you hiding, CE? Yeah, I, I mean, sure, it's a little bit of a uh, testing ground as well, right? Because both teams are definitely 100% qualified to the Eastern Clash, but... There's definitely, like, the only team that has put so much emphasis onto Sonya in the past, that was the one. And uh, Hugo, you know, putting on a heyday on that hero. And speaking of the one, more Hugo heroes, traditional Hugo heroes, make it into this draft with the Leoric being picked up so early. The Leoric, fantastic against Sonya. That matchup is, very much comes down to a simple trade-up of, are you getting hit by spears? No, you win. That it's, a, it's a simple attack. If you dodge the spears, then Leoric wins the lane versus Sonya. Sonya will sustain through it, but those drain hopes much easier to land than the spear. That is uh, correct, because the drain hope doesn't get intercepted by minions. You can't hide from it behind minions. Once Leoric gets you, he gets ya. Now, Dragon Shire, uh, sorry, Dragon Queen once again denied Alexstrasza no longer in the mix on this battleground. I think it's easily her strongest battleground. So you force 365 onto a different hero again. He is going for that Karazim for the second time on BOE. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do much. And the Jaina actually makes it through for the first time in this series as well. A Chinese favorite. Mm hmm. Very interesting. That should probably be an Aloofal hero, right? Unless I I'm think so. Thinking correctly. I think he's run it before. Unless they're going for a specialist like Mediv here or Abathur. Yeah, that's true. That could be an option. Now then, how do SBT finish out the draft? Bringing out the Sergeant Hammer. And that's quite smart because CE have just picked Jaina. It's very unlikely they're going to want to go a Chromie or anything like that now. So the yeah. main counter to the Sergeant Hammer has been accidentally self-removed without being banned or picked at all by CE. And that is the beauty of picking Sergeant Hammer relatively late into this draft, right? Because depending on what your opponents pick, and Tetra raised a really good point with that Jaina, you can expect that the double mage is not going to happen. So instead of banning Chromie because you want that hammer at all costs, they actually banned out the Alexstrasza, then sneakily waited for that mage to come through. And if CE had thought about the Sergeant Hammer, they would have gone for the Rainer first and then picked the mage after. But I really think CE didn't have the Sergeant Hammer on their radars in this draft. And that's why the draft unfolded to be as it is. 
This also likely does mean, though, with that Rainer pickup, that this might end up being an Zhuyu Sonya, uh, Li Ming. So, Li, wow, I just went double incorrectness. Uh, it might end up being a Zhu Jaina, but mm. we have seen Katie Y quite like the Jaina in the past. So perhaps it's a role swap coming in here yeah. for the last game with Zhu Yu going on to Sonya, which he's very proficient on, and Katie Y very quickly, very temporarily swapping back to the ranged. I think so too. I mean, uh, Katy has proven to be very, uh, very able to play. You know that Jaina and uh, Zhu is a great Sonya, probably one of his most successful heroes when he was still the main melee flex for CE. On the flip side, though, you can also see that the beautiful synergy between Rainer and Jaina, the Jainer, you want to call it, uh, is just absolutely amazing, right? The slow empowers the ace and the whole talent of Rainer, and vice versa. You also have beautiful, beautiful damage combined with Rainer and Jaina together. So let's see if they can actually brute force their way through and make this reverse sweep a reality. Or if SBT have found the rhythm again, if they can stabilize and get their act together and maybe still come ahead on this series. We're going to find out with SBT on the left-hand side in the blues. Featuring Lucky on that Hanzo, Melody C on that Sergeant Hammer, Misaka is playing the Johanna, Soap on the Leoric, and CZH back on Decker Kane. And on the right hand side, it is going to be CE. Can they pull off the reverse sweep with a Lufal on Rainer, Wind on Muradin, 365 on Karazim, KTY is on the Sonya, and Zhuyu sticks to the Jaina here. Also, I would like to petition that if we are going to come up with a combo name for Rainer and Jaina, then might I suggest Jimmy Jaino? Jimmy Jaino, I like it. <laughs> oh, the JJ, I like it. The JJ, okay. As we see, Melody C immediately knocks back win, dodges the Stormbolt. That's the all immediate trade up, and we saw a minion block here. This forces Hammer to position further forward. This is the idea, at least. Unfortunately, they still can't dive her. She's too tanky. Exactly. Uh, no pun intended. No, uh, I mean, that is the blunt truth, right? So, <laughs> especially after level four, we'll kick in, you know, with the siege tactics. If that is going to be the choice or the talent of choice, then it's going to be even harder to lock down the Sergeant Hammer. Let's actually see how many crowd control abilities are there on the side of CE that might force out a siege tactics reaction. Stormbolt, spear, maybe. But aside from that, I don't think this talent is necessarily a given. There's a Q from Rainer. I mean, I think it's a given just for the sake of it's so good. Yeah. I mean, outside of regenerative, uh, of like regenerative biosteel, I think is what that's called. Uh, the health regen talent. I just don't think the other talents gain any value else uh, otherwise as well. It's just not worth the risk. Yeah. The regenerative biosteel, as you said, you know, basic attacks while in siege mode heal you for 10% of the damage dealt. It's. It's great self-sustained, don't get me wrong, but as Tetra said, the siege tactics are just too good, especially in, you know, sticky situations like that where Murden tries to drop the hammer onto you. Speaking of uh, Sergeant Hammer, she's a little far away right now from the action, but Johanna Misaka is holding his own here up to this point. Strong Blizzard coming in, but Sergeant Hammer doesn't even seem to care up to this point. The potions are good, yo! Yeah. The potions are very good. 365 dives deep, a loophole with the wraparound, but the camp is Lucky. already taken. And despite the very very ambitious attempt by CE to but not only get the camp but go for kills, they don't get either. Yeah, for a moment I actually thought that Lucky still had a scatter shot available, so that could have actually dealt uh, loads of damage onto the weakened members of CE, but it looks like he had used it before. And now with Sergeant Hammer sieged up, ambush bonus damage, the Impalers reinforcing the lane as well. This is so much damage dealt already onto the towers, and look at the protection as well from CZH onto Sergeant Hammer, trying to dismount Murden before he even gets close, and then dropping potions from point blank range immediately. Lucky pings in, couple more scatter arrows for him, a farmer once again, coming in for Rainer. Interesting against the Leoric, but I guess the percentage damage also does ignore armor, so might as well. That it does. And uh, once again, in those shrine battles in uh, on Infernal Shrines in general, you could have those longer fights in which Jainer, uh, I keep saying it, in which Rainer uh, gets more than plenty of, uh, more than enough chances to actually, you know, drop in those, yeah. give him some pepper procs on enemy heroes. He's gonna be blinded though. I actually, for the first time, I'm gonna say I would have preferred the physical armor, uh, or the the actual armor, not the physical yeah, yeah, armor, because yeah. um, the Pyramid armor is, yeah, they're, he's gonna be blinded going to be zoned by hammer I, I don't see the value here right. either way he's still gonna well I, it, it's really up to the positioning of a loophole which he's we already know he's good at but now he eats a couple hits gets blinded as melody c rains down the pain into that choke point 
That is true. Sergeant Hammer absolutely untouched up to this point. He now activates the Siege Tactics, gets out to safety without breaking much of a sweat here. Too good is the unstoppable effect. And look at that. Still, the Shrine Control going over to SBT for the most part. 28 to 14 at this point. Even Rainer and Jaina, they can push out the front line of SPT. They're in true uh, 2016 style, actually. I just noticed that this used to be a very common front line, right? Johanna and Leoric, the wave clear masters, if you will. Very true. Johanna groups him up, Leoric knocks him down. Neil Peasants, as Melody C burns through. Actually, in tower range, finally the Punisher arrives <laughs> to relieve that pressure onto Sergeant Hammer. They take down the turrets. Sergeant Hammer not actually hitting level 7 as much as he would have li uh, liked to in that play. Yep. Should have given him hover siege, meaning he wouldn't have actually had to unseize there at all. Now he has it. Level 7 available as Merly C moves forward once again. Still not picking it yet, though, as they're able to pick up the kill onto Jaina. That they do, and that is already mighty bad news, you know, just killing one of the defenders while the Punisher is still active and while Sergeant Hammer is still completely unscathed is uh, bad news for CE, but immediately, look at SPT's rotation, they seem to be absolutely on point this time around. They invade aggressively, take mercenary camps on behalf of uh, CE as, you know, to top off the efficiency even more. Now look at that. The Sonic Arrow from Hanzo reveals the area around it, so Sergeant Hammer and the Impalers can actually destroy that fountain in the middle. Such a cute move. Very cute, very high pressure as well, like you said. With that fountain down, the next objective being in mid, this is the clutch move for SPT, where they can begin to get uh, value in the second objective phase. They already have almost full level lead. This is where they will attempt to get maybe level 10 with the objective and push to damage some tier twos. Won't be looking to take a keep at this stage of the game, but they're going to be able to get some good value out of it. Now, what can CE do? They do have equal talents. It's still a while until the level 10 is going to kick in for SPT, her leading in experience, of course. So maybe they can actually find an opening. Maybe they can find an uh, invasion point. And maybe steal away a mercenary camp themselves. Rainer, by the way, not going for the unstable compound at level 7, going for the heavy slugs. Mm -hmm. Now, this talent can be activated. And once it's active, your next Q is going to be wider and thicker and actually deals... Uh, we'll be able to reduce the cooldown as well, I believe. Uh, it slows for longer. Oh, it I slows believe. longer. There we go. It's no cooldown. It does. As you <laughs> eats them all of the scatter arrows, but he survives. He's going to be forced to back though after he eats that hit. And Brainer, he's like you said, he's going to need to get that zoning potential in with that oh. extra range. Do you denied the port again? Nearly dies. But yeah, Alufal needs to start getting the pressure on. Needs to get in as much value as you can, Rainer, before uh, what is totally going to be Arcturus Menx comes in. That's my prediction. <laughs> oh, oh man, now you're going to activate the rumor game again. But Ooh, rumor game's always happening. It's a consistent thing. You want to know who my guess is? Um, I thought you thought it was... Val I know you actually said it. you didn't think it was Valerian. So no, no, no. I, I thought it was also one of the Minx uh, family members. But then I thought, you know what? With Andrin surely coming in very soon, there's no way they would actually release, like, two princes or two royal human beings. Ooh. Oh, well, I thought I'm going to tell you what my hero guesses after we see Jaina fall. Doesn't even try to escape. Juyu perfectly was well aware of the fact that he would end up falling anyways. See, I think it's going to be Orphea, the, the little girl Decker Kane meets in the comics. First Nexus exclusive hero. Yes, yeah. possibility. We'll have to see. I mean, I think a coffin might have been a, a little better of a teaser if that was the case. But <laughs> either way. So, uh, I just want more villains in the Nexus. I'm always a fan of the, the little bit of evil coming in here, which is why I would quite like it to be Arcturus. As a lot of people thought it was Imperius when it first was shown mm, Yeah, here, I saw a lot of Imperius uh, guesses there as well. Mm-hmm. Which I would be totally fine with. I mean, Imperius oh, I'm okay with any of them. easily is the most bad of angels we have in uh, Diablo 3. May, Tyrion, come on. That's me stuck oh, no chance. back wind. <laughs> oh dear. Look, it, look, sometimes standing up to bullies is the most badass thing you can do. As we see KGY taking a couple hits from Hanzo. As we see Wind pressuring around the side, so be able to dodge away from it pretty quickly though. All right, once again, beautiful positioning here uh, by Soap, denying the Murden engages, but here comes the Hyperion. Seven side, it goes down as well, just like the Ring of Frost, but a five-man turnaround with that Dragon's Arrow from SPT and CE is on full retreat. So many low members there, but to finish off the Sonya on the way, and SPT pick up their second Punisher of the game. With mid-fort already taken down, 
When I said they might just start damaging tier twos, I might be mistaken that they might just start going for that keep. They could very well go for that keep. I mean, the purple Punisher, uh, the arcane one, is definitely your best buddy when it comes to sieging down structures. There we go. It's already in the back line, just like the rest of SBT. They're knocking down the gate at the very moment. Sergeant Hammer in a beautiful position. The Napalm Strike also reinforcing with damage over time. And here goes Rainer in a little bit of trouble. The Arkham Puncher now all up in his face. Down goes mid keep. First keep of the game at nine minutes almost on the dot. SBT looking solid in this game number five. Yeah, and you might as well ask yourselves, right, where has SPT been? Where has this gloriously strong-looking SPT been in the last two games? Not only did they throw the game in uh, on Sky Temple, but then they went for a bonkers draft on Volskaya Foundry and looked like uh, a quote-unquote weaker midfield team in the league rather than the uh, well-renowned SPT roster. But now they seem to be back in full momentum. They seem to have found a draft that suits them a little bit more and the Sergeant Hammer, most importantly, completely uncontested up to this point in this fifth game of the series. So very smart draft, looking great here for SPT. Picking the hammer after the Jaina is, was an absolutely gorgeous choice. And so for now, we're gonna see the pressure being applied. With CE trying to stay grouped, they want to get themselves caught out as has already happened to Jaina before. So they keep up with reinforcements close by. Very smart this time. This time around, Misaka is leading the charge here. It looks like Johanna has become such a dominant hero as well in China. She seems, seems to be doing so well. It would actually surprise, uh, it would actually interest me, like, what her overall win rate is in HTC China because we've seen so many players, so many hero uh, warrior players, excuse me, like Timeless, for example, like... Uh, uh, we also had Kaitu, by the way, on the A-team. Look phenomenally well on her. Do well with that hero. I think you might be right. Like, I'm going to give it, like, estimate probably around 67%. I'm going to uh, go for 69. All righty. Um, well, I can see her world record, but that's overall time. So I'll start <laughs> limiting by China. Oh, look at Melody C, man. He's just raining down Hellfire. Beautifully done. Seven-sided, though, against Misaka. Is he too far away from his teammates? I think he might be. No, the might potion's be. hit. Is it going to connect Bless again? Shield? Oh, my goodness. Bless shield and nap time, but Zhuyu's not done. Oh. Ring of Frost just short of landing, but they're still giving chase. Stormbolt is dropped, but Wind, with that anti-healing applied, decides he does not want to be here no more. The dismount, though, as well by Melody C with that beautiful Napalm Strike actually preventing Jaina from landing that Ring of Frost and turning it into a Ring of Nothing. Beautifully done all across the board by SPT, but also, I'm going to call this out, a little bit of luck involved yeah. on the side of Misaka. But hey, it's Luck is when skill becomes a regularity. <laughs> As we see Soap dancing back and forth there, able to trade it very helpfully onto a loophole there. By the way, we were very wrong. 46% win rate in HCC China this Almost. phase. <laughs> we were quite wrong. Just As this phase though, or taken. like all together? Just this phase. Oh, if wow. you would like all together, I can do that. I definitely thought it was much higher than this because we remember like so many countless games in which... Uh, Johanna seemed to be like one of the most decisive factors. Now, speaking of Johanna, she's a little bit far behind yeah. right now. The whole she... time it's worse. Okay, okay. Enough about numbers and Johanna. Never, no, no, never enough about numbers. Speaking <laughs> of numbers, it's currently 10 to 2 in favor of SBT as they do have positioning and are just about to hit 16, which is why Muradin's diving now. They want to try and get the counterplay. Hyperion coming in, oh. but Lufal gets wrecked by the March of the Black King. The seven sided strike, though, they will finally kill off Sober. Bless Shield lands. Damage output is good. Chasing down with the boosted hammer, but they can't catch up. It's still going to be a one for one trade. One for one trade, but guess what? CE took more crippling damage to the faces, so they're going to have to be on full retreat for now. Everybody else on the side of SPT is looking mighty fine. And Leoric on top of that, as if all of that wasn't good enough already, he will come back much more quickly than most of the other heroes. So, yet again, another beautiful Punisher take for SPT, and this might very well be a keep, another fallen keep. And if they end up losing two more heroes, three more heroes, CE, that could actually be a court call right here, right there. Could be. Question is, what are they going to be able to do about it? Pressure from this mid lane. Uh, so, sorry, from this bot lane with the Punisher. Full health, Sergeant Hammer, hover siege again. They might try and go for core if this keep goes down quick. Wind pulls the Punisher very far back. He'd love to put it to mid, but it's gone as the Stormbolt comes down. The Yorick pressures Muradin. Not often you see that. Zoning sleep more than anything there. 
Gives Nobody. him the opportunity to just come keep half health on the Punisher at the core. Hammer begins to take the shots. Yeah, Hammer begins to take the shots here. Braid focus fire onto Murd, and his healing is now reduced by 75%. That means no more self-sustain from the healing static that he has available. He's dropping dangerously low, but they don't even care about him. All they care about here is Zhuyu on that Jaina, who ends up falling in the core, might be next. So many lower health bars on the side of CE, but none lower than the core. It goes down, and SBT take the 3-2, and they will move on to the finals of the HCC China playoffs to play against